Welcome everyone to Otter's Corner. I'm your host, Toyin Yumesiri. This show is brought to you by Caris Publishing, and it's a platform where we showcase authors from around the world that have incredible stories that they are sharing with the world. Today with me is Ms. Ms. Veronica, and I'm super excited for her to share her story. Welcome to the show. Um, thank you. Thank you yes. for inviting me. Thank you to, for giving me opportunity to talk about my book, with my book, to say about my book something. I'm well, really excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to also learning more about, you know, why you wrote the book, the story behind the book, the story of the book as well. So let's, let's get started. Tell us a little bit about you and also the title of the book. Uh, so my name is Veronica Braila. Uh, the title of the book is Blue House, 10 Years on the Way Home. So uh, the story in this book, it's um, a story of my grand-grandparents. It's a real story. And uh, my mom was the one who was telling me and again telling me and again and again. She was repeating this story to me. And um, my dream was always to become a writer. Like mm -hmm. I was always finding this... Um, magic of reading the book and connecting with um with authors who like they passed away like long time ago but you're still connecting with them you still like um this magic of their message what they were saying like i like to take a cup of tea and take a good book and try to understand what they was trying to say in their book so for me, this always was uh, like um, a dream to become an author, to to give to give this world, to connect my world to with with others, you know. Yes. So yeah, so this story is um, it's not about only the <clears throat> political situation that was like a long time ago. Uh, it's also about uh, love, about family, about uh, connection with God, about faith about patient, about um, true woman and true man who mm. love each other, who build a strong family and who um, who look at each other through God. Mm. Like this, so this is very important, like connection, I believe. So it's about, it's not about only the, 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 the story. It's about everything. It's about life. Wow. Um, wow. I love how you said it's about life because real life you know in a way makes a great story because uh, oftentimes um the world presents a type of life that is just glamorous and you know the glitz and glam but they never share the behind the scenes the story of connection the story <clears throat> behind the scenes so i think your book being able to go deeper into uh the origin story of your grand grandparents as you shared and how they connected and even through your own eyes, seeing all their own decisions and the life they lived as now in terms of, you know, connect as you connect with their stories and who you are because of their story as well. So set the stage for us, you know, where you're originally from and this book, what country time is it set in? So this book is from, um... Uh, USSR, mm. when the Stalin was like uh, the commander of, you know, um, this book, it's, it's, um, it's like when it was hard time for people uh, about the uh, collectivization and how they was, um, the, um, uh, was taking from people what they accumulate for years. Mm. And it was unfair times when they like uh, let, let's say they accumulate uh, like uh, lands and they had like farms and they and everything was took it from them unfairly mm -hmm. like everything and if they was trying to say anything like to government this is like to fight back mm -hmm. uh, if they was trying to fight back was was punishment was like uh, they were sending to siberia with with mm -hmm. without anything Mm. And um, everything what was they accumulated was giving to 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 the collectivization <clears throat> uh, far, I mean to the <clears throat> sorry I'm, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah 
um, so it's it's about the, my family how they went through this um, um, through these times, like hard yeah. times. How was took it everything from them, and they were sending to send it to Siberia mm. uh, without anything, with three kids, and they took ten years to come back, and also wow. they lost. They lost each other, like they all was separately, all kids were separately, husband and wife was somewhere else and how they get together and um, what they helped them to keep their conscience, you know, and uh, healthy. So the, the healthy state and this was God, of course. Mm. So, um, yeah, I connected this book with God a lot. Mm. Like um, me, I'm, I'm, I'm from like a small country, Trinistrovia, it's called, it's between Moldova and Ukraine. It's yeah. very small country. Yes. And uh, like my parents, they never told me like about God or go to church or pushing me to pray or they never say nothing. The only thing uh, it's, uh, I saw that every time like um, they went through hard times, they were saying like, oh God, please forgive us. Like, you know, mm. and every time they was happy, they would say, thank God for, for giving us this. This is, you know. Mm. But uh, I believe everybody is coming to is coming to God in their, in their way. Everybody has their own trail to come mm. to God. So I went through a few times in my life to, like, hard times mm. that, um, that I put in this book, actually. Mm. <laughs> like... Um, you know, when you're fighting with your conscience and existence of God and, and the same thing. The same thing I have in the book. The main character, um, when he was coming back uh, to his wife, when he was searching for his wife um, and his family, also in his way back, he was with um, mm. another person who was atheist. So, um, like, there is a part of the book where he, they was they was fighting. The atheist was telling him that God doesn't exist. And mm. he was still insisting uh, insisting that praying, praying and focusing on, on the way back to see his family, to find his family. Mm. And um, the atheist was telling him, like, we just saw it, how a wolf eat a kid in front of us. And you still believe in God? Like, we, we go through so much darkness. Mm -hmm. There is no God existing. Looks like nothing happened. Like even the birds sat back on the trees, and they, nobody see nothing. But mm -hmm. the child was eaten. The kids is dying, and so mm -hmm. much blood, so much hard times. Mm -hmm. But he always was like um, avoiding absolute everything. Avoiding, mm -hmm. avoiding. Like everywhere, it's like if it's if somebody is telling he was telling him that God doesn't exist, he was taking this as. Uh, like evil talking to him mm. you know so he uh, like every time he was like no i still believe it this is evil like i help you you my friend but if you say this it's a evil talking through you mm. so he was avoiding and convincing this atheist guy to to convincing him there is something there is like so he was fighting with his conscience on mm. believing on still believing doesn't matter it's like uh, how hard it is you know, sometimes we have this, like, um, we have this, um, you know, when you go through hard time in your life and you're mm. saying, like, you know what, God doesn't exist. I don't mm. know. Like, I, I don't know if you experience mm. that, but mm. sometimes, like, let's say somebody you love mm. passing away. Mm. So you have this, like, fighting with your conscience. Like, mm. why like this? Like, yeah. I don't like what's going What's what's happening. It's It's very bad. Mm. So in this situation, I believe God it's in this part when you like when you still praying, when you're mm. still uh, fighting with your conscience that this is it, it is how it's supposed to be. The life is like this. We have to accept this. Mm. You know? So th this is making us growing. Like every time you're going to to the deepest part in your soul, mm. like you're going like empty. Like mm. the darkest part in your soul. Mm. Every time you're going there, like down in your soul, like you're very disappointed and like and everything, and you feel empty. Mm. Every time you're climbing back from this like dark spot, dark place in your in mm. your soul. Every time you're climbing back, you're climbing back with a with a treasure. It's mm. even it's God and wisdom. Mm. And you're, you're walking with this. 
Mm. You know, so I believe this, like, um, I put a lot of this uh, love of each other, praying, doesn't matter. If it's it's bad, you're still praying. They, mm. They was praying for finding each other, for moving forward. And uh, even was even worse and worse and worse. And the situation wasn't changing for 10 years. was bad for 10 years of patience. So wow. I put this like the, even, even what I put in the book, it's, it's good for, for any times, not for mm-hmm. those times. Even now, I could yeah. look at the wars, of this blood, of these kids dying. Wow. Of this, like we don't understand, like, like I don't understand some of the people, like why they react like this. Why? Because we have to enjoy life. Mm-hmm. We have to love each other. It doesn't matter who cares what religion, like who cares? It's, it's everything what's connecting us. It's like um, it's a God and it's respect of each other and yeah. treat a human as a human. Wow. Because in the end, we always need somebody to be by us. Like, Wow. This yeah. is so deep. This is, this is so deep. In a way, the story you took time how to write, you know, which was of your grandparents, in a way, when we also see what's happening in the world today, you, you, you can see that there are places right now and, and the world, right, where there's a lot of suffering, there's a lot of pain, families being disconnected, so many things happening in the world. And so I'm, as, I'm, as I'm listening to you and the core message in your book is still God, God exists, you know, pray, love one another, keep believing, don't give up. The darkest, of, the darkest of times can still reveal God. No matter how dark it is, God is still there. Don't believe that God doesn't exist. Don't denounce God. So I think it's a timely message, right? I think the message you've put in your book through the stories of your grandparents, I think it's it's timely for, for this moment. Yeah. When did you write this book? <laughs> and when did you publish it? Um, Two years ago. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a year ago, yeah, a year ago I published it. Yeah, because, yeah it's wow, and I, I would say the call message definitely. I, I want to encourage you to just keep that message of keep believing, you know, believing in God, holding on to believing in love, no matter how dark it gets, yes. no matter what we see out there. Um, this is not the time we actually need God more now than ever before. Would you agree with that? We do, we do, and uh, it's like it's always, uh, you know, like I said, it's fighting with our conscience because I believe it's always um, a fight between darkness and light. Mm. People don't like a lot of people. I paid attention. They don't. Um, they don't uh, mm. uh, understand this. They don't believe in this. Mm. But um, uh, like. Every time, every time it's something and it's somebody that's going to tell, even like your best friend, let's say you have your best friend and your best friend can tell you like, um, oh, here is not right, but you're doing right. Or let's say you're trying to bring the message about the God and they can say like, oh, you um, like, uh, Hmm. like, I don't believe in this. You know, you look at this world, like these kids are dying and this, everybody has to go through what they have to go to go. God is calling us. Um, for somebody is calling him 15 years, somebody 20 years old, somebody 30 years old, somebody four years old, somebody in the end of the life. God is calling you. Mm. Even like I experienced this, like uh, you know, when you um, when you forget about God, when you go through hard times, and or some sometimes even everything is good. Mm-hmm. You you're like oh everything is good, you know, life is perfect, and you forget, you put this aside. You know, mm. you say like, oh, I'm going to, God, it just thanks God. But no, you have to be totally connected. And God is calling you. And when God is calling you, it's it's very hard. Like in this book, they had like um, the family, they had everything. They had mm. land, they had family, they had love, they had. So um, the message of like, if you're positive, is going to come positive, doesn't work. Like like a lot of books are right that like think positive you're gonna have positive life no you can think positive have positive life but if god wants to call you to him he's gonna give you so big lessons 
uh, lessons and trails that you have to take and you have to go through it. Mm. And if you don't come to him when he is calling you, when mm. he is telling like, this is the road, you got you to gotta take this road to me, to understand mm. me. And if we're not taking mm. this, this road, these trails, we're going to end up like, if we're backing up and we don't want to come to him, all our life is going to be just miserable. Mm. If we're not going to take this trail. You know what I mean? I, 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 yeah, for me, I see, you know, being with God as the safe place to be anyway, right? And yeah. outside of God is where there's no safety. So it's yeah. not necessarily that God gives trial, is that, you know, Jesus came to give us peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. And, and many people may not realize that peace is very expensive. This is <laughs> many the thing people, people don't realize this. People they don't, don't realize that. Time. Yeah. For, a, for a nation to be in peace, for, for people to be in peace, for families to be in peace, is that, you know, even spiritually, Jesus fought for peace. He, he fought to bring us a certain type of peace that he says will surpass all understanding. So in a way, peace is worth fighting for. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and being with God is the safest, most peaceful place to be. And in a way, look at the world anyway. And psychologically, I, you heal things. You heal the psychologically. Look how many mental mm. people are sick. They they mm. they going nowhere and they don't understand what's going on. They they fighting for mm. nothing, absolute for mm. nothing. Mm. And it's like psychologically, like mm. uh, like it's it's uh, mentally. I mean, mentally it's very good. Even mm. mentally, if you don't have a religion, you don't want to believe in God. Just think about this. Mentally, it's healthy, like you said. It's peace. It's mm. peace that he's leading you in the right direction and he is with you. Mm. So, yes. That is quite interesting, the, the idea of just believing in of itself, the act of believing in yes. God yes. in of itself brings a certain type of internal stability. Yes. And not believing displaces us. Yes, yes. It's okay. mentally healthy. Wow. It keeps you healthy because a lot of things are going on. Mm. So if you believe, you're mentally healthy. Because if you're going to go and if you imagine without God, I know you, you believe in God, so it's very hard for you even to imagine, you know, without oh, Right, right. It's you know? like the hand imagine you don't out, have him right? and everything is happening. Yeah, yes. Right, because it's like... How scary it is. Yes. Yeah. There's a there's a Bible verse that says like because this is like an anchor for your soul because there's a there's a verse that talks about you know two houses that are built one is built on a rock one is built on a sand when they are exposed to the same elements to the same weather elements one stands the other right the foundation is eroded so in a way believing is an anchor that keeps you secured because when things happen you know because that's that's why in a way what you're saying makes sense like believing in of itself offers internal stability and not believing displaces people creates a lot of chaos internal chaos because if you don't know who is holding you if you don't know that there's so much more happening that you cannot control but there's someone that can control external forces right then then that rest that peace right it's 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 like i've never said like the way you're explaining it it does make sense in terms of the internal fortitude even that people people humans were made to enjoy by believing in their creator by believing in god so i mean just so coming back to your book i i say again this is this is a clear message for our times and so even though it's set through your grandparents' story yeah. and, and of love and of life and, and of finding each other. You also talked about 10 years apart, the struggle, the believing. I, I think it's quite inspirational. I think it's quite, um, you know, inspiring. And the, the message that you are bringing, definitely, I, I just, I pray that people can lay hold on that, of, of that key message. So do you do speaking in churches or do you speak publicly on, on this no, story? No, no. For me, it's so hard. 
I'm not, but I understand, like, this is my understanding, and I see myself peaceful in this way, you know, and that's what I want people to understand, too, to understand that, like, uh, you have some time to fight with conscience, you know, mm. this is very important, because it's so much information, and information that we don't need, information that's damaging us, information that's, like, breaking us, you're not focused, you're not focused on family, you're not focused on happiness, you're not mm. focused on peace, oh. um, something every day, the news are telling you, this happened, this come, this is coming, this is coming, like, <laughs> you know, wow. yes, yeah, wow, so. This, this, what you just shared is so important. Like you said, there's, there's information we don't need. And you also talked about us focusing. We need to focus on the things that really matter, right? Because we life is short. Life is short and uh, we have to do right things. Because um, if we do big mistakes, we go too far. And it takes years to, to, to go back on the trail, to mm. get to the healthy um mental state you know mm. so it's better to not make mistakes to enjoy it to take care of like close person to you to mm. take care of your family mm. to to focus on on your neighbor even to you know to share mm. the fresh baked cake or to like you know like simple things mm. not to going like um uh, for something that doesn't even belong to you just because you know people around are talking and to find yourself through God, through to understand God. You know, I'll tell you another thing. To understand God is not easy. To pray, even to pray is not easy. Mm. Like when you're trying to focus on prayer, my sister, my sister, she always telling me, because uh, she's more into God, more into prayer. She knows Bible very good. She's every day she's telling me a part of the Bible and she's mm. explaining it. She's calling me, oh, I can't hear. Let, let, <laughs> let's talk about this part in the Bible. So she's very, she's like very into God and Jesus. And so <laughs> she always telling me one thing, one important thing. Before mm. you start to, to to read the Bible, pray to understand. Mm. She wow. said, pray to understand the Bible. Wow. She keeps repeating me this, uh, my sister. She said, because sometimes, even when you enter the church or uh, like, and you're trying to understand God, pray to understand what the priest is saying. What the message is trying God to send, to send it special for you. Wow. Because you're going to church and you may not like my friends like, oh, I don't understand. Like, okay, like what he <laughs> saying. No, you don't understand. You have to pray to understand God. You have to ask him to let you to understand him. And even the Bible, like sometimes you open and oh, what's the message? What's the message? But the message is it's for you, but because you, you you're not open for it. Your heart is not open for it. Your mind is not open open it for it. Wow. So this way, some people, they don't understand because they didn't pray before they tried to understand. Mm. You know what I mean? I do. It's... <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, this sounds simple, but it's profound that, and, that even the concept of God, understanding God is not something we can approach with our own limit. Like, what you're saying is so powerful because when we think about the Holy Spirit also helping us understand, leading us into all truths, is that yeah. God, God, in, God himself is the one that can draw us close and help us to find him and know him. Uh, so this is so profound because when, to your point, many people would say they don't understand God and, and even many people that and not going, getting closer to God, maybe simply because they really don't understand God, right? Yeah. They, they don't understand God. So instead of seek, trying to understand him, they've taken a stand of saying God doesn't exist. Yes. So because they don't understand. Because when you do know God, because there's a scripture that says, you know, we must, we must actually believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder of those who seek him. And so that's seeking you know, through prayer, through reading the Bible, through exchanging, like you said, your sister 
you know, sharpening you and sharing with you our own revelation of God, that in of itself, I think what I'm also hearing is we need to prioritize that. We need to give time to that. That there are some, you said some information we do not need, but there is information we do need for our own well being. And maybe we need to just shift more time towards seeking God, seeking to know Him, asking to understand Him. To yes, him. To understand Him, to, to hear understand. Him, to understand Him, and yeah. to like to pray sometime. Like why I said it's hard to pray because praying itself is like connecting to something magic. Like you have to believe in God and talk to Him. So basically, what people they used to, they used to. To talk to somebody, they see it, they can touch it, they can, you know. Hmm. But here, when you, like, let's say you you pray to God, you're talking to somebody that you have to believe first hmm. that of existence. And you believe truly. It's not like, um, oh, I don't know, he exists or not, but I'm going <laughs> to pray for it. No, it's going to be empty. You're not going to feel nothing. But hmm. if you truly believe of this connection, you're going to be fulfilled of so much happiness, so much mm. energy. And you, your things are go, is going to go well. You, you're going to have like good relationship with everybody. You, you're going to succeed when it's true connection, when you're true believing and talking to him. Wow. Well, and I feel well, like... I mean, yeah. Yes, and I really feel as we're speaking about believing, if someone is listening to us right now and is struggling with believing, you know, it's really simple. You can you can just all you have to do is calm yourself, right? Find a quiet yeah. place and just whisper and just whisper and, and you can even say, God, I believe you, I want to believe you, or even help me believe you. Oh, right? this is the thing. First pray to to open up, you know. To open up for him, him to open up to you. Mm. He's opening up to you. So you have mm. to pray for this prayer. Yes. Wow. God, help, help help me see you, help me know you, help me hear you, help me believe you, help me find you. <laughs> this is the first prayer. This is the first like people have to do before they want to feel something magic. Because it's magic. It's magic. When you have somebody who is there for you in your future, in your present, and everything that happened to you in the past was a test for you to open up for him, to understand him, to believe in this internal life. Can you believe in, believe in internal life? We have this like magic in us. This mm. is amazing. <laughs> this is like, imagine you, you, you're doing things and you're not scared because he's there for you. He's like mm. heaven father. He's a father for you. So, yes. So that's what I tried to give in the book too. Like I try to give people to understand, to focus, because the things around are going and are bothering and the evil, it's always, evil doesn't let you do good things. Mm. Never. He doesn't like, the devil doesn't like you to do good things. You, mm. will, you do good things, you're going to pay for it. Like with the bad friends, with like judging, with like everything is going to happen to you around. Mm -hmm. But mm. you have to understand this is, is not mine. Mine mm. is what what the message I'm trying to give to people, it's connect, mm -hmm. my connection to God. And yes. if somebody is judging me or is telling me that uh, like I joined some mm -hmm. uh, whatever like organization that we like uh, to bring people and you know how like people talking about this, mm -hmm. I don't care. It's my message. It's my feeling. I, feeling. I feel good with this. I'm going through this and it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's always a fight. Like we're paying for good things, we're paying for bad things. It's never, it's not, it's never like we never left by ourselves in like nice yeah. flow. It's never nice flow. Life yeah. is not easy. It's not easy. It's interesting. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> wow. So, so in starting to wrap up, there are key messages here. You know, love one another, right? Believing so God. Confident. Self-confidence yes. is a gift too from God. Yes. yes. Believe God, right? No matter how dark it is, keep believing, holding on to family, the things that really matter, prioritizing fellowship and with God, prayer, principle of prayer. You shared yours, um, reading the Bible, 
praying before reading the Bible. Praying and, before and, reading, praying before yes, understanding God. And, yeah, and opening opening your heart, opening your, your heart, your soul to the to the concept that God exists, God loves you, and inviting him to help you know him more. And really, if, if there's someone watching and you've not given your life to Christ and you do want to do it, you can really just follow that principle of opening yourself and asking God to come into your heart to reveal himself and you declaring that you believe him and asking him to continue to show you how he wants to walk in and through you. So any parting words and also do share your book again, the title and where people can find your book. And if you have website or any type of programs that you would love people to connect with, do share that as well. Yes, so my book you can find it on Amazon. It looks like this, Blue House, 10 Years on the Way Home. And uh, Amazon, and um, I have a, a page on Facebook too. So I have a page in uh, Instagram too. So who wants to? And Facebook, I post like the quotes from the book. and mm. Yes. Awesome. awesome. Yep. Oh, thank you so, so much for joining us on this show. I thank mean, this has, been, this has been really deep, right? You know, we talked about life, the real meaning of life. And I just pray that, you know, we all as a society come back, you know, putting our collective humanity together, fighting for peace. Peace is expensive. It's very... And insist, insist on your way. Insist on your focus on your things. It doesn't insist. matter. Every, everything around doesn't matter. Everybody have their own trail, their own road. Right. And insist on you. Not on to be path. distracted. Let's you not be distracted. be distracted. Let's yeah. come back to the things that really matter. Family, yeah. love, peace, and joy. So I want to thank you, Miss Veronica, for joining us today and all that you. have watched. I hope you have a great time and it's happy Thanksgiving to everyone as yeah, well. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so happy much. And thank you to Carrie's Publishing as well for presenting this show. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you.